Hi, I'm Bridget Bittman. I'm with the Orland Park Public Library and we're here to tell you about events in March. March is Dr. Seuss's birthday month and we are celebrating Cat in the Hat in our Youth Services Department. Stop by and take a picture with our larger than life stuffed Dr. Seuss on our chair. Kids are welcome. Parents, don't forget to bring your cameras. And there is a cat in the hat hidden in the stacks. So you and your kids can search throughout the, the library books and materials and in our kids area to see uh, where you can find Cat in the Hat. While you're at it, stop by the library and take a look at our Italians in Chicago exhibit. It's a wonderful exhibit. We've got family photos, Italian artifacts. We even have an Italian wedding dress that's accompanied by the family photos um, of the bride and the family. Uh, also, you're not going to want to miss some of our great programs that accompany Italians in Chicago this month. On Tuesday, um, March 24th, we have Italian Americans internment. This is something that not a lot of people are aware of. In addition to Japanese Americans, Italian Americans were interred during World War II. So stop by for that at 7 p.m. on Tuesday, March 24th. In addition, has anyone ever watched Laverne and Shirley, Happy Days, The Odd Couple? Well, we've got Mark Rothman, the producer, creator, and story maker for those shows. He'll be uh, with the library on Thursday, March 19th, and he'll tell a little bit about his stories in the sitcom trenches. So you'll be sure to mark your calendars for that one. In addition, we also have lots of kids programs. And if you're looking to new, learn a new computer skill, we've got Microsoft Excel, Microsoft PowerPoint, learn about Facebook, Twitter, and how to download free audio and eBooks from the library. A lot of people don't realize this is a free service that the library offers. We also have free digital magazines. If you have an iPod, um, iPad, a tablet, you're gonna wanna learn how to download free magazines and free books. Make sure you stop by the library and check out our website for the classes. Now, we've got an excellent few uh, minutes of video coming up for you. Betty Davis, a lot of people love her from the golden ages of Hollywood. We've got Leslie Goddard portraying Betty Davis, and that'll be up coming up next. In addition, the Chicago Wolves player. We've got a great winter reading program that just ended. And to cap it off, Terry Broadhurst, a Chicago Wolves player who's a native of Orland Park, who plays for the Wolves, is going to visit and meet with the kids, talk a little bit about hockey, and one of the kids even gets to dress up in the hockey gear. So you won't want to miss it. Stand by for more programs and great entertainment from the Orland Park Public Library. Well, I'd like to say what a dump, but I can't say it here because I'm at the Orland Park Library and this beautiful village of Orland Park. It's me, Betty Davis, and I am delighted to be here and share stories from the past with everybody. <sighs> what a dump! <laughs> Whenever I do a stage show, I always have to start it that way. I come on stage, take a drag on a cigarette, and say, what a dump. It always breaks the ice. People can laugh and relax instead of having to revere me. <laughs> you want some others? <clears throat> Don't you just love Sunday afternoons? Everything quiet, nothing to disturb you. Well, I'd like to kiss you, but I just washed my hair. <laughs> or, nothing can hurt us now. That's our victory. Our victory over the dark. And it is a victory because, because we're not afraid anymore. Or perhaps you remember this one, hmm? Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. <laughs> That, you see, is what you call a legend. <laughs> Apparently, I am a legend. Who knew? Although the first time someone called me that, I thought, but you only become that when you're dead. <laughs> but I know if you live a long time and you have a long career, they will call you a legend. That, and of course, if you have imitators. Now, people think I don't like the people who do imitations of me. Well, I do like it, if they're good. Would you like to learn how to do an imitation of me based on these imitators? Here's what you do. You take your cigarette, 
Everyone have your cigarette? Hmm? <laughs> and you puff like mad. <laughs> and then you take your other hand and with your elbow, move it in a circle. Puff your cigarette, move your elbow, and then say, Peter. Peter, bring me the letter. Peter, bring me the letter. And do you know, there never was a picture or any part in which I ever played against a Peter. Never, in any part, but it always goes, Peter, bring me the letter. And do you know, I never was conscious I moved my elbow that way until I saw one of these imitators doing me. But I was always conscious I wanted to be an actress. Always. When I was 11, I was at this wonderful New England boarding school. It was Christmas time, all wintry. And for some unknown reason, they decided that I should play Santa Claus. Which, of course, was ridiculous because there was this enormous red suit, big white cuffs, white cotton beard, ho, 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 all that, tree full of burning candles. Well, they left me alone. So, of course, I started poking around under the tree which presents were for me when suddenly, whoof, my cuff caught on fire. I shook my arm, but that made it worse. My sleeve caught it. My beard was on fire. The teacher came in and rolled me down to put it out. But here's the thing. Once it was out, everyone gathered around. The sides of my face all red, eyebrows singed, eyes seared shut. And I heard somebody say, she is blind. Oh, God, she is blind! Now, I didn't know if I was blind or not, but I just ate it up. I remember thinking, this is my moment, my big moment. So I kept my eyes shut, groped around, until I had squeezed out the full savor of that moment. This was my first big moment. And it just hit something deep inside. The skin healed, thank God, thanks to my mother, Ruthie. Ruthie changed those dressings every two hours for two weeks straight. That was Ruthie, selfless, bless her heart. She had a hard life, God knows, but Ruthie wanted me to have everything. She was the one who pushed me to be a dancer, do plays in high school. Went with me when I got a few parts on Broadway. She even came with me for my first screen test for Universal. It was not a good beginning. <clears throat> Hello, is this Universal Pictures? Yes, this is Betty Davis. Betty. <laughs> Davis, yes. Well, I've arrived here in Hollywood, but there was no one from the studio to greet me. You said someone from the studio would be there. No one who looked like an actress. Well, I was carrying a dog. That should have told anyone I was an actress. <laughs> Not a good beginning. Those first couple months, they just didn't know what to do with me. They all said that instead of the usual glamorous plumed bird, they were stuck with a little brown wren. Oh, Ruthie, these pods, they're just awful. The simpering sister, the, the silly girlfriend. I don't think they know what to do. Imagine looking at something that looks like me when you've been looking at all these really glamorous women who've been in motion pictures for years. One day, they asked if I would help test some men for a part. Now, in those days, I was the yankiest, most modest virgin who ever walked the earth. But they laid me on a couch, and I tested 15 men. They all had to come in, lie on top of me, and give me a passionate kiss. Oh! I thought I would die. I just thought I would die. Well, you probably can guess what happened. 
The ruling was not in my favor. Apparently, if someone makes more than $1,000 a week, she should put up with anything. I lost the battle, but I won the war. Because when I got back to Hollywood, they gave me a good script and a good director. Marked woman. Based on the story of Lucky Luciano, a serious picture about the New York underworld with a concern for society's losers. Perfect. <clears throat> Some women end up with the short end, but not me, baby. I know all the angles, and I think I'm smart enough to stay one step ahead. In one scene in this picture, my character is beaten up, off screen, of course. Well, the makeup they wanted me to wear. Thin strip of gauze over the forehead and under the chin. It looked like a nun's habit. <laughs> so on my lunch break, I went to my own doctor and I said, now doctor, I have just been beaten up by two thugs. Bandage me up like I'd be. He put thick gauze all over my head, pads in each nostril. Fabulous. When I got back to the studio, the gatekeeper called Mr. Warner. Uh, it's Miss Davis. She must have had a terrible accident. Come quick. I really was one of the first fighters for that sort of thing. Because I believed in reality. That's what the screen has to offer. Real reality of appearance. Hollywood always wanted me to be beautiful, but I fought for reality. <coughs> What's next, Mr. Warner? Jezebel, a southern belle who wears a red dress to an all-white ball? Love it. Who's directing? William Wyler. Oh, I've heard he's demanding, temperamental, ruthless. I would love to work with him. <clears throat> Press, I can't believe it's you here. I've dreamed about it so often. A lifetime, really. No longer than that. I put on this white dress for you, Prez, to help me tell you how humbly I ask you to forgive me. Jezebel was the real beginning of that name above the title. Without Mr. Weiler, I would never have had as great a career as I did. How's it going? I'm Terry Broadhurst. I'm here at the Orland Park Library today, hanging out with some kids, signing some autographs, and talking about hockey. I'm an Orland Park native, so it's great to be here today. Uh, how's it going, everybody? My name's Terry Broadhurst. Um, like's already been said, you guys may already know, I'm actually native of Orland Park. Uh, I grew up in Evergreen Park, just down the street here, and uh, moved to Orland when I was about the fifth grade. And I maintain a residence here. I actually uh, grew up skating at the Orland Ice Arena right down the street here. So uh, some of the first times I was on the ice right here in this town. Um, first off, thanks for everybody coming out. This is a great turnout. It's good to see all you guys. A um, little, little bit about myself and uh, how I got to this point uh, in my career. Um, growing up right around here, like I said, in Chicago, uh, was able to start playing hockey when I was probably about uh, two, three years old. Started skating for the first time. Um, I think the first time I ever skated was right there at the Oaklawn Ice Arena, the, uh, the original one before the new one was built. Um, I fell in love with the game like a lot of you guys. You know, I watched the Blackhawks growing up. I was a big fan and, and from there it kind of took off. Um, as I got older, I wound up playing junior hockey in uh, Sioux Falls, South Dakota for two years. And then from there I played uh, college hockey uh, in Nebraska, Omaha. And from there I was fortunate enough to be able to sign a professional contract with the Chicago Blackhawks at first. I was in, uh, in Rockford for the, uh, with their minor league team for two years. And after my contract up was up there, I was fortunate enough to sign with, uh, with the Chicago Wolves. So, you know, I must be doing something right because the hometown teams uh, keep sticking with me. So, you know, it's definitely, it's definitely been a lot of fun. Um, like I said, I've, I've had a lot of support um, from being your guys' age, you know, from the time I was really small to the time I was here, uh, parents, friends, and stuff like that. Um, and one of the main focuses that I can remember my parents always saying, before I could ever play my sport, whether it was hockey or baseball or basketball, I'm sure you guys hear this at home, I had to finish my homework. School is always a very important thing, so I can't stress enough how important the academic side is, is of it. 
you know, sometimes it gets a little tough, but, you know, those are the things that help you out the most as you get older, is making sure you're getting your schoolwork done. And, you know, these events are great. You guys get to come to a library. You guys get to read. I, I can't stress enough how important it is to learn as much as you can while you're young. It can take you as far as you want. Yeah, the world is your oyster. You know, the opportunities you guys have are incredible. And, you know, I'm proof if just because you're from this area doesn't mean you can't accomplish good things. You guys can accomplish great things. And it all starts uh, with the knowledge that you guys have and the things that you can learn.